Hello everyone, I am your peer mentor Joaquin De La Cruz. This video is the guide for course registration. We will mainly focus on the course enrollment procedure in this video, and if you're curious about that, this video might help. So let's get started. The course enrollment procedure involves three stages. These are the pre-enrollment, the validation and class enrollment, and the add drop period. The pre-enrollment. For year one engineering students, there are some required courses that the school has already pre-enrolled for you. These are the Health 1010, ENGD 1010, and both are zero credit bearing. There's also Lang 1002, which is three credits, and Math 1012 or 1013, which is four or three credits. There are also other engineering introduction courses so you can choose to learn more about each engineering program. Here is the list of choices that are offered for pre-enrollment in fall 2020. Besides engineering introduction courses, you can also choose the science fundamental courses. You can check the choices here. The pre-enrollment process will be performed on the e-advising system. Log in to the e-advising system, click into the major preferences and course pre-enrollment box to pre-register the courses you would like to take in the coming semester. This process increases your chance to successfully enroll in the introduction or fundamental courses. It's like a fast pass to the course registration process. You will receive an email after submitting your pre-enrollment choices, so please remember to check your mailbox frequently. Schools will try to register at least one course that you've selected for you. As one of your graduation requirements is to take 120 credits, therefore we recommend you to take 15 to 18 credits per semester. For the pre-enrollment result, you can check in the Student Information System, or the SIS. After the pre-enrollment, you will be getting into the validation and class enrollment process. You are able to add all other courses aside from the introduction or fundamental courses. For the planning and checking of the courses, you can go to the HKUST class schedule and quota website. You can simply search HKUST class schedule online to get into the page. First, you have to choose the term, which is the semester that you are looking for, and then choose the course prefix. For example, if I want to choose a physics course, then I click on PHYS, and it shows all the physics courses provided in the semester. Then let's take Phys 1001 as an example. You can see how many lectures are provided. In here, it offers two lectures, the date and time, and the class location. On the right-hand side, there is the class quota, the number of people who are enrolled in the class, the available seats, and also the number of people waiting to enroll. On the top right-hand quarter of the box, you can see the course info. You can check more course details in the box. For example, it states that this course is a common core course in the SNT area. Next, exclusion. We will talk in more detail in the next slide. And also, the course description. Here is the class number. You will need this number to register the course, so it is very important for you to mark it down. Next, we will be talking about prerequisites, co-requisites, and exclusions. There may be some requirements or conditions for enrolling a course. You can check from the course info and see if the course requires prerequisites, co-requisites, or exclusions. And here are the definitions. Take Math 1013 as an example. Prerequisite. It states that you can register the course if you have attained a level 3 or above in HKDSE M1 or M2. Exclusion. It states that if you took AL Pure Math or Applied Math or these math courses offered by HKUST before, then you are not eligible to take Math 1013. I am your peer mentor, CC. After planning, we can start the official enrollment process. First, you have to enter the Student Information System, SIS. You can search my portal UST online to get into the page. Then click Student Center. After logging in, you will enter this page. Check your assigned time for enrollment by clicking into the detail on the right column. So you can see here is the date when you can start to add courses to your shopping cart. And here is the date and time when your enrollment process really starts. Students will be assigned to different time slots for enrollment, so remember to carefully check your own time slot. After checking your assigned time, we can start adding the courses to the shopping cart. Back to the main page, we click Plan. You will see there is a column for you to enter the class number, which is the four-digit number we have marked down from the class schedule and quota website before. Enter the number and you will get into this page showing some information about the course. Click Next and you will see this page showing that you have successfully added this course to your shopping cart. Here, you can see your current status. A triangle means the course is already full and you will be on the waitlist when you enroll in the course. A circle means there is still available seating for the course. So what do we do before the enrollment appointment begins? 
When the enrollment appointment starts, select the course you want to enroll from the shopping cart list. Click Enroll, confirm with the course information, and if there's no problem, remember to click Finish Enrolling and you will see the result. Here again, the triangle means that you are already on the waitlist. And you can see your position number here. In this case, there are 30 students ahead of me and I'm waiting in number 31. After enrolling in the course, you can view your timetable by clicking My Class Schedule. So here is your timetable. The word waiting here means that you are still waiting on the waitlist. If you have successfully enrolled into the course, which means that you are not on the waitlist, it will be shown like this without the word waiting. Lastly, we will be talking about the adjunct period. The adjunct period is usually the first two weeks when the semester begins. During this period, we can add new courses, swap, or drop the courses that you don't want without penalty. And here, swap means you can change from one course or class to another. The original course will not be dropped until the new course has been successfully added. Besides, in the original case where I'm on the waitlist, I can wait until the add job period ends to see if we can enroll in the course. So it is very important to check your schedule daily during the add job period because you may find yourself successfully enrolled into the course suddenly and it may cause changes to your class schedule. As the waiting position fluctuates a lot before the end of the add job period, it is very important that you cancel the waitlist request before the add job period ends to prevent enrolling into an unwanted class. Here's the quick recap. The class enrollment involves three stages. In the pre-enrollment, you will find that there are some courses that a school has already pre-enrolled for you, and you can still pre-register some engineering introduction or science fundamental courses through the e-advising system. During the validation and class enrollment, you can plan and confirm your class schedule through SIS. And you can add all courses during this period that are not limited to engineering introduction or science fundamental courses. During the add-drop period, you can still perform add, drop, or swap in the SIS until the add-drop deadline. We hope this video can help you with the course enrollment process. If you have any questions, just come and talk to our e -square -I academic advisors or visit the following link. HTTP ARRUSTHKUG class. See you in the next video.